Hello and welcome. I'm Angela of Stamping Beauty in Christchurch, New Zealand, and today I'm sharing with you how I created this card using the Layers of Beauty stamp set and coordinating masks. This card is for the Be Inspired blog hop. I'll have a link below to my blog and you can take the hop and see what everyone else has made. All the products I'm using today will be listed in the description box below and can be purchased via my online store. If you live in New Zealand and would like a copy of the latest Stamping Up catalogue, please contact me. I'd love to send you one. So let's get started. Um, I've got a base of Melon Mambo to start with. So I'll just hold that in half and use my bone scorer to just give it a nice sharp edge. And then I'll just set that aside for use later. I've got two layers here, that very um, fine layer here, just to give a wee frame. So that's that one there. I'll set that aside for use later as well. And then this is the one that I'm going to be stamping on. I've got my Memento Black Ink and I've mounted the stamp up onto this block here. That's the F block. I'm also wanting to use my foam mat because it's a photopolymer stamp. What I'm going to do, I need some scrap paper. I don't want to just so know where the edges are. Put that in the middle. And then I'm going to ink it up. And with a big stamp like this, I tend to ink it this way so that I can see where. I've got the ink and give a really good even amount. And then if I'm going to be leaving it too long, I just do give it a bit of a huff. And then what I want to do is get this stamp sort of layered right as much as I can sort of across here. And then give a really good press down. Make sure I've got that ink well covered. Take that off. That looks good. And then I want to add some more down here. So I'll ink that up again. Just give a little huff. And then I'll just turn that around about like that I think and I just want to pop a little bit in the corner there just a little um, tiny little bit just to fill that in it's not too blank just take that along like that and then I might just do a little something in there. Just a tiny, tiny little flower. Just take out that um, blank space. And turn it over so I'm not confused with that. So then you've got um, all your stamping done ready to go see fairly similar to what I've done before then I'm going to add the color and I'm going to do that I've got the masks here so there are two leaf ones and three floral ones and I tend to start with the biggest floral first And what I might do is just so that you know I'm putting it in the same place each time. If I just pop that on there and because I've sort of been playing around with it and getting it in different places, things have moved around. So you just you can work it out pretty easily where to place it. So once you've got it. In place 
then that's what that little if you can't see that white or not white there's that nick there so you can um, put a little nick on here and you can line it up but what I also do is just do a line across here this makes it a little bit quicker and easier then I'm going to start with Melon Mambo and you can add your ink heavier and then lighter or you can just do it all one um, sort of um, I'm trying to think of the word you know the same same amount of pressure because you're adding layers on so each time you add on a, a layer you're going to get a deeper color so it just depends what sort of look you want to go for I'm just got the, the this is the first layer and I'm just going to do not too dark just keep on adding a little bit more on So that's that. Then I need to work out where, because I've switched everything around, where these flowers are. That looks pretty good. There. What I might do is just add some extra line so I know where to line that up hopefully you can see and then just add some more pink oops and that's the thing too if it does slide away you can just line it back up again and that one there that one there and this one here it's a trick that's the only tricky bit if you do play around with things just a little bit of trial and error and I'll just um, set that aside and later on when I've um, finished up I'll just rinse those out under the tap so here we've got this and we're going to line it up again with that notch and then with those other lines and then bring that in again and just do exactly the same thing. Just add your pink. And just add that extra layer. And the thing is you can just go back in later if you want to add a bit more if you're not happy. So it's easy just to line the, the mask up again. What I love, I just feel like it makes you an instant artist because it gives you that lovely shading. see there just hopefully you can see that just that nice bit of shading and then I'm going to go down here to there and, and that's another thing too the more you use these products you get more familiar with them so you know where where things line up and how they look. Right. Again, add a bit more down here. It just takes shape every time you add a little bit more on. Probably don't need to worry too much about these little ones here. 
unless you want to as well while we're here and then just this one up here in the corner it probably won't really matter too much so it's just a tiny little piece in the corner there I'm sure no one's going to notice too much if you don't get it exactly right it's pretty forgiving and then this is the last one for the pink and of course you could if you wanted you know cha change it up and use um, coordinating colours I just like using the same colour it just makes it really simple you can make this a little bit dark if you like but it is going on the other layers so you are getting the extra depth of color anyway and then just down here um, This is pretty easy to line up with those little holes for the middle of the flowers. And done. So that looks, you could even look, look, leave it like that. It looks pretty with the, just with the black and white in the background. Um, but I'm using those certain colour coordinations, so combinations, so I need to use my other colours, but certainly something I could try for another day. And then this one here are the leaves, so I'm using Granny Apple Green. So I've done, for this we're doing the colour theory, and I've used the colour wheel, and you can see the triad here, so I've got the Granny Apple Green. And then we've got the balmy blue here, and then in here we've got the melon mambo. So you could to get that. So lots of different ideas using the colour wheel. Sometimes if you're a little bit stuck for colour ideas, you can just play around with that and come up with something. Right, so same thing, that same notch is there. And then just grab some of the green apple green. I like to pat it into the, the lid just so I don't waste it. I can go back and use it from the lid. Just going over it a little bit more, get a bit of extra depth if you want that. down here you just want to keep make sure you hold firm the mask once you've um, worked out where it goes you could tape it down I'm a little bit lazy like that and it's just another step but certainly worth doing if you're worried about it moving And we've got those ones up. I think that's that one there. And then lastly, these little ones over here. Which I'm hoping are these they are. And that is the first layer of green and then lastly and you can just see what it's how it changes just getting that extra layer on getting the shading in lastly 
lined up. You just want to be careful with the mask too, where there are pieces that are a bit finer. It's pretty resilient. And then that's, I could go over that a bit darker, I think. That needs a little bit more. I'll just line that back up again. And these mini ones, the, the blending brushes are great for the smaller areas. Just keep on going over until you get. And that's that. So that looks pretty good. And then down here, do this last lot of leaves down here. That up again, hold it firm. I've gone a bit darker on these ones, but that's okay. Leaves are different, aren't they? They're all end up being different brightness. They're quite a bit darker, actually. Maybe I better I might just go in and do these just a tad more so it doesn't just look like they belong together. A good thing isn't it you can always add it on can't take it away <laughs> going straight off the pad like that gives you that extra depth of color too quite easily and quickly and then just these last two here a little tiny bit more color in there wouldn't really need to if you didn't want to because nobody is going to notice too much but while I'm here I might as well I'm sure this goes on to line that up doesn't look like it belongs there does it but I'm sure that was maybe it's these ones here ah does that look better that looks better And done. So I'll throw that on the floor ready to wash. And then the next thing I've done is use the light balmy blue Stampin' Blends. And this is quite a slow process, so feel free to speed me up. But what I've done is I've coloured all the background in with the blending pens. So you just, I find the best way is to like that and then just color in um, you can use the brush end if you want but I find this end is really good because it gives you lots of control and I tend to do the smaller areas first the areas that you can sort of um, are sort of contained if that makes sense see this area here so it's just in here and contained and then that dries at the same rate because with the blending um the stampin blends you want to be able to blend them and they blend better before they dry so if you can sort of contain little areas and do those first then it's going to blend a lot easier and not look patchy and then once i've done the smaller areas then I'll start working on the bigger areas. So I'll carry on doing this and I'll speed it up so um, 
that we get further ahead, but you can um, see what I'm doing. Uh, just a couple of handy hints too for colouring. Um, if you draw around the edge of your flowers, or your images, it gives you a little buffer so that when you are colouring in, you've got that little buffer of colour that um, is not right next to the edge. So you've got a little bit of wiggle room. Just if you make a little mis mistake. And also, what I tend to do is just do circular motions. This makes it, I don't know, it just seems to work quite well. And just remember to it will, um, as it dries and develops and soaks into the paper, it will, I think, a lot of those sort of, um, the st um, marker strokes, Sort of just disappear. And sometimes it just adds a little bit of interest to your project anyway. It is after all handmade. So that's it done. And then what um, I've, if you can see on here, I've added splatter. So I'm going to do that um, once I've got everything um, glued on so that... Um, then I don't have to worry about being too careful with it. So to get this off here, because I've taped it on, I just twist it a little bit, just so I don't damage it. Then I'm going to pop that onto that little mount that I've got. I'll just glue that straight on there. So it's just a, just a couple of millimetres that I've left so nothing too much just very narrow and then that is going to go on with dimensionals onto the card base so just get those spread nicely across the back of the card Bring the card base in and I just want that to go nicely down there nice and evenly and then I, but I don't want um, now I'm only doing this because normally I would set it aside to dry but I want to show you it all set it all done so what I'm going to do is just pop this so I can't handle it re very much once I've put the splatter on so and I don't really want it on the pink so I'm going to pop those there. Then I'm going to bring in just a um, block and the Whisper White ink. This is an old water painter and I do keep a little bit of water in here just to add to here because it doesn't come out anymore because it's so gunged up with the paint. 
and then I just want to mix that up. The runnier, it, uh, the runnier it is, the more it sort of gives you some nice, good um, splatters. I just tend to splatter down like that. You can flick it on the end, end of the cap, but I find that that sort of does make sort of lines with it. And I, I just want really f the, the splatter just going straight down. And... I like quite thick, but if you want thinner ones, just sort of don't um, eh, mm, try to think how to get less. Just not so th um, runny, not so um, you know much in um, ink on the end of the brush gives you finer splatters. But I quite like some good good white blobs on it and then I'll just take that away and you can see that close up perhaps those nice big splatters and while that's drying I'm going to get the sentiment ready and the bow so I've got the happy anniversary here I've got my powder some mark and my embossing buddy which I keep on mentioning I need another one I just need to go out somewhere where they have them um, stamp my sentiment I'm going to fussy cut that so it makes it easier not to worry too much put a little bit more go back and over it if you're not quite happy sometimes it sticks a little bit more the second or third time you do that and then I have um, let me take your pick tool so I just use that end sometimes just to do it in your little bits With the splatter on my card, it probably doesn't really matter too much that there are a few white splatters on here. Right, I'll just um, heat that, won't be a second. fussy cut that but if you're not a fussy cut fan you can just find a die that will work for that I don't really worry too much I just sort of do a bit of a wiggle around the letters but Nothing too particular. And that's that. Now, there are a few flecks, and if you don't like that, because I tend to not do the um, the white flicking on the words because sometimes it can um, interfere with the letters and you can't read what you've written or, or what you've stamped so sometimes I just go over them with the black marker it just gets rid of any of those little it just makes it look a little bit sharper if you sort of tidy those up a little bit other thing sometimes I do depending on the size of the stamp so I've got a um, this is a white pigment ink um, it's a just got a roller ball on there and I just go over the letters just 
any that are thick enough to take it. Those are, some of those are a bit thin, so it's not really going to work, but it just does sharpen it up a little bit. And then lastly, I'm going to do the bow, and I'm using this black and white gingham rib ribbon, which is um, since retired, but there is another one out, so you can use that. Um, and I'm just going to cut down the middle just to give it um, a little bit more movement. And I've got some other old scissors. I can use those a bit quicker. I've got longer blades on them. So what I'm just doing is cutting it straight up the middle. Oh, and even then, it doesn't have to be too straight because um, when you tie it, sort of don't notice whether it's cut straight. Then what I do is just get pop those two back together and then do a loop and then what I like is you can just it's not going to want to do it is it separate them so you get that sort of extra look and then do the same thing down here actually I might have made that You can, once you've tied it, you can play around with it. So I've got my two loops. And then I'm just going to, and I've still made it. Hold on, I'm going to down there a bit further because I need a bit more for this. So then what I do is loop that around and then tuck that in through the back. Pull those through pop my finger back through there just to hold it and then tug on that and then I've got the two loops there and you can really play around with that and um, get it how you like it on your card and then I tend to just measure those always is one longer than the other just trim that off yeah so now what I'll do is I'll bring this in and I just want to carefully add these bits and pieces seeing it's still wet um, find a glue dot I want that to go about there so pop that on there my bow onto the glue dot and I'll try not to move things around too much you can certainly do it later when it's dry and then this is going to tuck on over here so I'm just going to put a glue dot um, sorry not a glue dot a dimensional either side of that bow sometimes if the bow's too the knot's too high I will put a double layer of dimensionals I don't think it's too bad this time and then just make sure that's nice and even pop that on there and then lastly I'm going to use some of the iridescent uh, rhinestones, uh, pearls at least, and you can pop these anywhere, and if there are any particular blobs that you don't like the look of, just pop a pearl on top of it, it just gives a little bit of a sparkle, I think I put about five on last time. And 
just tuck one in, in here. And that is my card for you. So I hope you enjoyed that. If you like colouring in, then I'm sure you will. Um, it's a bit of a lab labour of love, um, colouring in the background. But um, I love it. I love find it therapeutic. So thanks for watching and take care. Bye.